Okay, here's a quick and dirty instructional guide for getting the EV3 up and running at home. Uh, first thing that you're going to want to do is open up a browser, Firefox, Chrome, doesn't matter. Um, Internet Explorer, I suppose. And let me see here, find the tabs I want. And you're going to want to open up a new tab. And you're just going to type in there, Lego EV3 driving base there it is and this will be your first search result and just click on that and you scroll down this page a little ways and you will see the ev3 driving base and when you click on this it's going to give you some instructions um, for how to assemble your driving base step-by-step -step instructions goes all the way through it's quite straightforward so it works out very nice the other thing with the driving base is that if you wanted to do stuff with sensors for example um, the driving base is compatible with all those so the other thing you're going to need to do on your pc is download small basic so you just type in small basic and it's usually the second search result download microsoft small basic 1.2 from official Microsoft and you hit the little orange button down here and you hit download. Now I've already got it downloaded on my computer but um, it'll it'll look very similar going through this. Uh, if you use Chrome it's down here in the lower left hand side. If you use Firefox it's going to be up here in the right hand side and if you use Internet Explorer it will have asked you to save it or run it. Just click on run. So we're going to just double click on this down here and that's going to bring it up and we just start hitting next. Now for you, you would have a series of next, two or three more next. Um, for me, I'm just going to hit repair and this screen will come up that says yes or no. It'll go through all this and then it'll pop up to finished. And you just hit that. Once you do that, you have installed two programs onto the computer. Small Basic. So you just come down here to your type here, the search section right next to the Windows icon on your taskbar. And you just type in small. And the Small Basic icon, three little cubes, three different colors will pop up. And you just double click on that and open up Small Basic. And for me, i got to smooth this over to the other screen. So here's small basic that's what the interface looks like and on your taskbar you're going to see the little icon right down here where i'm wiggling my mouse around at and you just right click on that if you want and i have it pinned um, pin it to your taskbar and the icon just stays down there you don't have to go looking for it then next thing down here in the type here to search section you're just going to type in e usually that'll do it sometimes EV, but if you put in EV3 Explorer, this almost never comes up for some strange reason. So you want to make sure that you just put in E or EV and then look for the EV3 Explorer. Open that up, and if your EV3 is plugged in, it'll pop up and it'll look like this. Um, if your EV3 is not plugged in, then when you go to open it up, there we go. Yours will probably look like that the first time you do it. Um, either way, down here right next to your small basic will be the EV3 Explorer icon. I would recommend pinning that to the taskbar, and then you just have both of them right there next to each other. So after you follow the LEGO driving base instructions, you've built it. Now you're ready to come over to your small basic editor and start creating a project so the first thing you're going to do with that is you're just going to hit save as and for you you're going to probably i usually like to put stuff like this on my desktop you can put it wherever you want but i would recommend making a folder now i already have a folder right here called uh ev3 i'm just going to delete that real quick and kind of show you the process here so i'm on my desktop i hit new folder and i'm just going to Call that folder EV3. And I'm going to open that up and I always call my projects like project one, I would call P1. Just keep it simple. Hit save. And now up here you can see that this is project P1 and it's in my EV3 folder. There's my little breadcrumb path up here, my network path. And now we're going to get down to the coding. 
So for the coating, it's it's a lot of repetition. It's not very difficult coating, but it is text-based coating. So we're just going to type in the word motor, and then we're going to put dot, and then move. And you'll notice that the motor and the move are both capital letters. And I'll explain these in just a second here. You can also see you get this nice little... Um, pop-up screen in here that gives you all the other options that are available with little definitions over here and longer definitions and descriptions over here about what they do so but for right now all we need is the motor dot move and then we're going to put in a parenthesis and a quotation and a capital B and a capital C and a quotation and a parenthesis and while, while you type in that section there you can just keep your um, shift down the whole time just makes it a little easier and then we are going to right after that quotation mark we're going to put a comma and I'm going to put in 100 and I'm going to put a comma and then I'm going to put in 1000 and I'm going to put a comma quotation capital true quotation parenthesis whoops I already had my parenthesis there Okay, so that's your first line of code, and essentially what this line of code is saying is go run both motors B and C at 100% power for 1,000 revolutions. You know, the way I explain it to the students is, is that it's a conversation between the code and the EV3 brick. Okay, so the little driving base. And basically it's saying to the EV3 brick, hey motor, and the motor says what? It says I'd like you to move. Okay, what do you want me to move? Well, I'd like you to move motors B and C. And on the EV3 brick, there are ports for A, B, C, and D. We usually plug them in B and C. So from ports B and C, we have two motors hooked up. So motor, move, motors B and C. All right, I'll move those. How fast do you want me to move them? I'd like you to move them at 100% speed. You can only go up to 100. You can type in a bigger number than 100, but it won't do anything. Um, so just a hundred down to zero um, And then how many times would you like me to turn these? Um, motors oh, I'd like you to turn them a thousand times and then the last one is just yes, this is true I'd really like you to do this. So that's essentially what it means motor move move motors B and C at a hundred percent for a thousand revolutions. Yes, that's true so I've got that one line of code in there. I made my folder. I've got my file already made. All I got to do is hit save now. Now that has been saved. And I'm going to go to my compiler. Double click that. And it recognized my EV3 on here. Now in my compiler, I need to go in and I need to hit refresh on this side. This is the side that is your PC's hard drive. This is your local disk for your PC. The left side is the hard drive for the Lego brick. So on your side, and you are probably not in the same spot as me, so I'm just going to mess this up and go way back. If you get lost, just keep hitting up, 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 up until you get to the C folder. It'll stop there. Click on that. These are single clicks, by the way. They're not double clicks. And then you're just going to scroll down to Users. And then from Users, you would look for your name or whatever you have in there. And if you're the only user, then that's the only one that's in there. This is my folder for Users. And there's my Desktop folder. And there's my EV3 folder, and there's my P1.SB. Okay, and then I'm just going to hit refresh on that just to make sure that it's the most current version of this in this folder. And now I'm going to come over to the brick side. And for you, you're probably going to have a whole bunch of folders of files all through this area in here. And you're going to want to delete those. And I'll show you how to do that after I create this one. But for right now, I'm just going to make a new folder. And I'm going to call it my folder. Hit OK. And there's my folder has appeared in there. And I'm going to do all of my compiling onto my EV3 brick inside of my folder. So I just open that up. Here's my file. I click on that. I'm going to come down to compile. When I hit compile, as long as there are no errors, it's going to pop right over here. Now that it's over there, I can, and I'm going to flip screens here real quick. And my 
webcam is not the best so you're not going to be able to see everything great here but you'll get some idea of it so here is the ev3 and you'll notice right now that i have it plugged in through a usb cable to the computer and that's how that ev3 explorer the one that has the um, I'll just show it to you again here real quick as opposed to spending a month and a day trying to explain it. It's the one that has this right here, EV3 Explorer. You just compiled that one line of code onto the EV3 and I'm going to take it and I'm going to come over to this portion right here and you can kind of see that there are some tabs up there at the top if I can kind of get the light off from it a little bit. And we want to move over to the second tab. I'm just going to flip it around real quick here. I'm going to use these kind of arrow keys, directional keys right here. These are your directional keys to allow you to navigate in and around here. And then this, yeah, let's see if I can do this. These two here will allow you to move up and down through menus. And the center one will allow you to select something. So I'm in my second one. I'm under my folder. And then I move down to P1, and this should move for what this considers 1,000 turns at 100%. It won't be a lot of movement. That's what it considers 1,000 turns. It's usually about a foot. That's your basic straightforward line of code. I'm going to come back over to this, come back over to this screen here. Um, I'm going to close out the EV3 Explorer. I'm going to go back to my code and i'm going to add a line of code in here so i'm going to put in there motor dot move and for this one here i'm just going to move motor b so it's going to be able to turn then and i'm going to have motor b move at like 20 percent speed so that you can kind of see that and i'm going to have it move for 350 rotations and get our yes i really would like you to do that in there it is case sensitive it is syntax sensitive if you miss a quotation mark a comma whatever it is it will not work it doesn't seem to be space sensitive and that's you notice on this line here i just did spaces on that one up here i didn't do any spaces in there other than that one right there so we'll see if this screws it up or if it just works so I'm going to hit my save button or control S and I'm going to open up my EV3 Explorer again. Now on this side right here, I've got my P1 SB and the first thing I need to do is make sure I hit the refresh button. You can see the size is 66 right now and I hit refresh. Oh, it automatically refreshed for me. That's good. I just would highly recommend just hit that refresh button every single time on this side here in this window. Hit refresh. Open up my folder click on my p1sb right here on the hard on my pc side hit my compile button and now i come back over and this time i should have straightforward and then one wheel turning just motor b so you can see your wheels here should be straight ahead and then one wheel moving and that one wheel moved really slow too as it should have so so far the code that i've showed you is basically the code that will get you anywhere you can go straight ahead you can turn which is essentially what these things do they drive straight ahead and they turn you can do a lot of variations on that speeds rotations to get around certain obstacles one of the things that you could potentially do is create a little obstacle course and have the kids try to code it so it misses stuff or i use uh like uh painter's tape and i'll make a little maze on the floor for my student for them to navigate have some fun with it enjoy yourself if you got any questions let me know there's a lot of help sites on lego's website that's well worth your time if you get stuck in there other than that it's pretty straightforward if you get past the frustration of, of this especially with younger kids i've done it with fifth graders i haven't done it with anybody younger than that um and it took them about three <coughs> excuse me three four days to get to a point where they could comfortably do it on their own but once they <coughs> got going they loved it <coughs> excuse me not COVID-19 all right so there you go again if you need any additional assistance let me know